Hello, scholars. We are still talking about physical properties. And what physical property are we going to be talking about today? Today, we're talking about volume. Volume. I feel like you should say that like with a special kind of tone, like volume, volume. Today, we're talking about volume. Today, we're going to understand that matter has measurable. Remember measurable? It can be measured. Physical properties. We can use our physical senses to observe it. And we can make those things and put them together and use it to classify matter, to break it into group. So we're going to understand that it has measurable physical properties. And those properties determine how an object is classified. And we're going to do that today with the word volume. Got to come up with a definition of volume today. Now, what is volume? This is a graduated cylinder. This is a graduated cylinder. This is a graduated cylinder. This is a syringe. And guess what? They all deal with volume. Do they all look the same? Absolutely not. Are they the same color? Absolutely not. Do they all have to do with volume? Absolutely they do. They all have to do with volume. How do they have to do with volume? Because volume is the amount of space that a substance occupies or that is enclosed within a container. So this container has a certain volume. This container has a certain volume. This container has a certain volume. And these are tools that we can use to measure the volume. Every morning when I get up, I make a coffee. And I really enjoy my coffee because my coffee helps me to keep going throughout the day. I enjoy a cup that has a very robust and large volume so that I can have more coffee in my belly. Yes, I enjoy a whole lot of coffee, although it might not be the best thing for me. I'm working on it. Just keep me in your thoughts. Here we go. How could I determine the volume of my cup? How could I determine how much coffee I could fit in here in the morning? Look at me dumping water everywhere. That's a quick way to not determine the volume if you dump it all over the floor. But how could I determine? Well, we're going to do that right now. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some water. This is a two liter. I used to call these Kool-Aid pitchers when I was growing up. And we're going to fill my cup with water. Oh, here we go. Let's get it. 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 There we go. Then I'm going to take one of my graduated cylinders. What do you think? This is a pretty nice size cup. So this might not be the appropriate tool to use. I'm probably not going to go there. I'm just, no, I'm not going to do it. Actually, I'm 100% positive. That is definitely not the one that I am going to use. I'm going to go the other direction with it. And I'm going to try, no, I want the nice, I'm going to go this one right here. And I'm going to take the water and I'm going to pour it into my graduated cylinder. And I'm going to try not to spill it all over the place. Are we ready? Here we go. So we got up to the top. I still have a little bit more. So now I'm going to go to my smaller graduated cylinder. There we go. I'm about out. All right. So now how do I use these tools to determine the volume of my cup? All I did was I moved it from here to here. How does that help me? I'm going to tell you because you are Geniuses, and today you're learning about volume. When I look on the graduated cylinder, I'm gonna notice that it has little tick marks. So this one counts by 50. So this says 50, and then it's got one, two, three, four, and then it has 100, and then it has one, two, three, four lines, and then it has 150. So this one is skip counting by 50s. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500, and then I see an ML. ML stands for milliliters. So this graduated cylinder measures 500 milliliters. Okay, so I know that this cup is at least 500 milliliters in regards to its volume. But was that all of the liquid? Absolutely not. I had to use my smaller graduated cylinder as well. And this one counts by fives going up to 50, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So if I take the two numbers and I put them together, I can say that my cup has a volume of about 
550 milliliters of water. Is that not awesome? Oh, I would love 550 milliliters of coffee every morning. Let's get it. Woo! Absolutely. But volume is awesome because it's everywhere. This room has a volume of amount of oxygen, a volume of amount of objects. Like it has a capacity to how much stuff that it can contain. Now, there is one more graduated cylinder that we have not used today. Now, my question is, my wondering is, my thing that I'm trying to discover is, I wonder what is the difference in the volumes between this graduated cylinder and this graduated cylinder. So when I look at them, I can see definitely that my, my tiny graduated cylinder is so small and cute. Like a little pre-K child on the playground. It's just like, oh my God, this is so awesome. And hey guys, sorry for the then I I'm have getting a lot of questions about the PD calendar. For I have an interruption week. coming from the speakers. This is if awesome. You pull it up, Do you guys, feel like you're at school right now? At the top Let's just listen. That says all registration links can be found here. It will take you to a different document that has the links to register in Edgeforia Strive. You have to scroll over to the right to see them. So some people, I think, are just maybe barely missing it. Okay? Thanks. Bye-bye. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm back. The announcements are over. That happens in class all the time. I hope that made you feel like you're in class and that you're home and all that kind of good stuff because I did. All right. Here we go. We're going to look at the difference between the volume in this graduated cylinder and this graduated cylinder. This is tall. It's skinnier. This is smaller and a little bit wider. Let's make our observations. What do you think? Do you think that the taller one's going to have a greater volume? Do you think the smaller one's going to have a uh, greater volume? Like, what do you think? Based on the things that you see, what are your thoughts right now? Share them. Share them. Take a time out. Talk to your teacher. Or you can just sit here and watch me move around awkwardly because I can do that. Crouching tiger, hidden dragon. All right, we are back. We're going to look at the volume of our two graduated cylinders. So I'm going to take this one and we're going to start off with our Y one. We're going to go, 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 go. Uh, all the way up to 500 milliliters. Now, if I was to take this and pour this into the smaller one, it's very clear that it's not going to be long before I run out of space. And I'm going to be able to see very quickly that the volume of the bigger graduated cylinder is far, far greater than the volume of the smaller graduated cylinder. There's no more space in here. There's, there's the lines right there. I could have taken it up to the, it would have poured completely over, but I don't go past the line. So I'm going to give that back. Thank you very much for donating. We appreciate you. You have a nice day. Oh, yes. Goodbye. I'll see you later. You're not being used anymore. Okay. Now we have two graduated cylinders left. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to pour it in, and we're going to look, and we're going to see what happens with this thing called volume. My top line is right here at my finger. I'm going to hide the number just in case some of you have really, really good eyes. And here we go. What do you think is going to happen? Where will the volume be? Oh, we're coming. We're coming. We're coming, we're coming, and we're up, 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 up. And guess what? It is identical. Just because this one is taller, just because this one is wider, it does not affect the volume. So be advised that different containers, even though they look differently, the capacity, the space that is enclosed within the container could be the same, and that's why we have to measure them. We have to measure them. So I could classify these based on what one has the greatest amount of space, the least amount of space. I could say classify them based on objects that have a volume that is greater than 50, less than 50. I could classify them if I did greater than 50 and let your back, yes, you are, your back, greater than 50. Both of these are less than 50. So I can classify these two graduated cylinders have a capacity that is greater than 50. This graduated cylinder and this syringe, they have a capacity that is less than 50. When I take this syringe and I pull it, it's only going to go to 50 and then it's going to stop. 
that is volume. I hope that you learned something today. You better have learned something today. And here's what I want you to do. I want to know if you can truly understand the concept of volume by creating your own definition of volume. Now, if you need something to help you or something to use to describe it, you can grab two cups from your house. You can get a big cup, you can get a little cup, and you can use those to help you to, of course, this is not a cup, it's a graduated cylinder. I'll use an imaginary cup. You can use a big cup or you can use the little cup, the one that's not in my hand, but it is in my hand, but you can use those to help you explain what is volume, what does it mean, how can we use words to explain it, and all that kind of good stuff. We will be back with more physical properties. I know you can't wait because I can't wait either. Let's get it. Have a great day. Y'all are awesome. Y'all are amazing. Y'all are scholars. Y'all are getting it. Education, science. I love it. Have a great day. I already said that. Goodbye.